بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, إن شاء الله you are able to hear me and if I get the confirmation uh, I will start بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف الحمد لله we are able to have once again our session and this time is from home and because uh, Fajr time here is just about 5 uh, 30 which is your 9 p.m. so we had to have some delay I'm sorry um, now we can continue with the rest of Munajatul Arifin we have had two sessions so far and we reached this sec uh, section Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Ilahi ma alabba khawatir al-ilham bi dhikrika ala al-qulub O Allah my Lord how enjoyable how pleasing how sweet is for the hearts to have thoughts which inspire your remembrance Alabva comes from Lava Lava means pleasure opposite to alam which is pain so ladha means pleasure ladith means something which brings pleasure it can be physical pleasure like for example when you are thirsty and you drink water it can be mental pleasure like when you understand something it can be spiritual pleasure like when you have uh, good feelings in your salat for example so ma aladha means how pleasurable how nice how sweet how pleasing is khawatir is plural form for khatira which means something that occurs to your mind or to your heart some ideas some thoughts that come Elham means inspiration and Dhikr means remembrance the Dhikr is with your remembrance and Ghulum means hearts so the idea is that sometimes some thoughts are inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they co come to our heart to our mind we are not fully aware of what is the source of these thoughts you know it's not that for example you have been uh, thinking about something and you made an argument and you proved it for yourself so now you have a conclusion no, these are something which occur, something which happen. It has its own uh, cause. And because we don't know it, so we say it's inspiration from God. But how does God inspire us? We don't know. Just we know that it seems it comes from somewhere else. 
I am not uh, responsible for that. Sometimes, you know, you put yourself into the same condition, hoping that the same things repeat, and they never repeat. So maybe sometime when you are praying, when you are reading Quran, when you are contemplating, some beautiful thoughts come to your mind. And then you want to plan for it next time. So you want to do the same thing. So you try to observe the same dua, the same actions, the same timing, but they may not come. So this shows that these are not the results of our own performance. Our performance was important, but it was just part of it. It's up to Allah to decide when and where to inspire us with those thoughts. So we say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how nice, how sweet is for the hearts to have those occurring thoughts of your remembrance through inspiration so that you inspire them to remember you in a very pleasant way to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a very broad concept and it's much more than invocating some of the names of God or some of the things that God has done for us when our heart is oriented towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we are receiving light from God and we can appreciate that light and reflect that light this is remembrance of Allah and there are different ways to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everything good that we do is remembrance of Allah and if among the things that we can do which are good we do the best things so our remembrance of Allah is better and this is why Prophet Musa asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to assist him with several things رَبِّ شْرَحْ لِي صَدْرِي وَيَسَّرْ لِي أَمْرِي وَحْلُ الْأُغْلَةً مِنْ لِسَانِي يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي وَجْعَلْ لِي وَزِيرًا مِنْ أَهْلِ هَارُونَ أَخِي He asked several things from Allah in Surah Taha He wanted to have a great patience and capacity of heart He wanted uh, Allah make his affairs easy He wanted to have no blockage in his tongue so that he can speak and people can understand properly he asked to have a helper from himself and that is his brother Arun but then he says all this is so that we can remember you we can glorify you more and after few verses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells them la taniya fi dhikri you must do your best to remember me and don't uh, do it less than what is appropriate so remembrance of Allah include everything that Musa did in future and he wanted to do more of good things so it's not something just like mentioning some of the names of Allah or invocating Allah's name it's the whole orientation that we should have with our body, with our mind, with our heart. If I commit some sins with my physical organs, like looking at bad things or hearing bad things, or if my mind is preoccupied with bad thoughts, or if my heart is occupied with bad things, this means that my remembrance of Allah is not complete so I have to make sure that I have best remembrance of Allah for me if I do the best possible things within my capacity then I am in a state of remembrance of Allah so sometimes 
we are inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do good things, to remember good things, to make good intentions, good decisions. Sometimes we have very beautiful thoughts about Allah, about our life. So we feel very close to Allah, we feel we are well oriented, we are well functioning at that time, we are tuned properly. So that is the time that these beautiful experiences happen. وَمَا أَحْلَ الْمَسِيرَ إِلَيْكَ بِالْأَوْهَامِ فِي مَسَالِكِ الْغُيُوبِ Ahla comes from halawa, which means sweetness. Hul means sweet. And in Arabic we say halawiya for, you know, sweets and like candies and so on and so forth. Al masira ilayk means traveling to you. Awham means thoughts, imaginations. Masalik means roads, and Ghuyub means the hidden things, the unseen. So we say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَمَا أَحْلَ الْمَسِيرَ إِلَيْكَ بِالْأَوْهَامِ فِي مَسَالِكِ الْغُيُوبِ Very beautiful and very deep. How sweet is traveling towards you with or through thoughts, imaginations, upon the roads of the unseen. Sometimes our journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very obvious, is very clear. We are traveling on the roads of the seen, of shuhud. For example, when I am doing something with my body as an act of worship, I pray, I fast, I go for Hajj, for Ziyara, to visit my parents, to do Salih Rahim, visit the kinship, to help people. So these are very beautiful, very good, and very much needed. But in addition to this, Sometimes you get involved in deep thinking and actually active thinking, not just sitting somewhere and doing nothing and you say, I am thinking. Even thinking is to be very active, is to be well planned, well regulated and well directed so that it produces results. Sometimes we are not uh, doing anything and we think that we are thinking. So, when we are involved in this deep and active thinking, so maybe my body is not doing anything. I am here. I am not going anywhere, I am not visiting anywhere, I am not doing anything special with my body. I am not spending anything. But what happens is that I am traveling, not on a normal road, a vis visible, obvious road. I'm traveling on a, a special road, road of the unseen, through my thoughts, my ideas. And sometimes these are more powerful Thinking, contemplating for an hour or for some time, this sa'a doesn't necessarily mean 60 minutes, is better than worshipping for a year or according to some hadith, 60, 70 years, depending on the quality. After performance of our wajibat, our acts of worship, then this thinking is very important. 
I'm not saying not to do anything mustahab and just think. But I'm saying that in addition to all the mustahabbat that we do, we have to have some time for thinking. And sometimes it is through thinking and developing your thoughts and ideas that you come to a better understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a better understanding of your role in this world, a better understanding of what you have done in the past, a better understanding of what you are supposed to do in the future. You can sometimes discover your problems. You can go deep into your heart and find out the bad habits that you have. You can judge between yourself and other people in fairness. So there are many, many things that you can achieve when you travel on this road. This road of unseen, this road which is not very obvious. Maybe a person is sitting next to you and he doesn't know what you do. He thinks that you are not doing anything, but you are indeed traveling. You are journeying. So, وَمَا أَحْلَى الْمَسِيرَ إِلَيْكَ بِالْأَوْهَامِ فِي مَسَادِكَ الْغُيُوبِ how sweet is traveling towards you through thoughts, imagination, upon the roads of the unseen. Then we say, وَمَا أَطْيَبَ طَعْمَ حُبِّكَ وَمَا أَطْيَبَ طَعْمَ حُبِّكَ It should be طعمة. How pleasant is the taste of your love? This is said by someone who has tasted really the love for Allah. By Imam Zayn al-Abidin alayhi salam. The taste of Allah's love, which means love for Allah, is so Great that as we said before, it's impossible to taste it and then look for something else. As Imam Zain al-Abidin says elsewhere, who is the one who has tasted the sweetness of your love and then he has looked for some replacement? Something like this, Allahi Manzalazi Zaga Hala Wata Mahbatika Farama Minka Badata. Who is the one who has tasted this and now looks for something else? Imam Sajjad Ali Salam says this not only through his theoretical knowledge. We all know that. For all of us it's obvious that the most pleasant thing for a human being is to have this love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Imam Sajjad also speaks out of experience. He has really experienced and tasted this love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and has found it to be the most pleasing thing. I think we also more or less maybe have experienced this. But I'm not sure if we have ever had that experience in its intensity, in its real form that the friends of Allah taste. You know, it's like, for example, few people looking at something and Imagine, for example, there is a beautiful painting, and all of them say, I have enjoyed. This is very interesting. So, they have had some experience, but you are not sure whether they have really understood the beauty of this painting. It needs some qualifications. Maybe among those who say it's very beautiful, you can have different levels and only one of them or maybe even none of them has the best understanding maybe someone outside so we all talk about the sweetness of the love for Allah and we are honest and we have really experienced this 
maybe sometime during our salat, during our, I don't know, uh, nights of Qadr, during Hajj or Ziyara, after doing something good, we had had that very strong feeling of love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We feel very much close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In that time, nothing matters for us. In that time, we just want to keep talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't want to be distracted by anything. If in that particular time you are asked whether you want to have a long life or short life, whether you want to have lots of money or not, nothing matters for you. Okay, we may have that experience, but still we have to be sure that there is much more possible. If we taste the love for Allah in the way that His friends taste, then it would be very difficult for someone like us to remain normal, to remain um, very organized and, you know, disciplined in the life. You know, you become like mad people. You become like drunk people. If the love for Allah becomes very strong in your heart, and you are not a person who has that caliber like the friends of Allah, like Ma'sumin and Awliyaullah, you would not be able to cope with it. You would lose your interest in everything. You don't want to talk to anyone. You don't want to eat. You don't want to drink. You don't want to travel. You don't want to go to work. Because very powerful experience. You just want to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's a sacrifice for a lover of Allah to do other things and to spend time on other things, to spend energy on other things. It needs great capacity. Otherwise, Allah is so nice, so attractive, so beautiful, so kind, so loving, so much available to you, which is very important. You want a beloved who is available to you that would leave no chance, not nothing extra, so that you can think about other things. It's very important to learn how to love Allah that much and still act normally so that no one notices that you have such a love for Allah. To have that intensive and strong love for Allah and then still pay attention to other things, the things which happen around. It's very difficult. And many of us have no capacity for doing that. We need to learn. We need to experience. So we hope that inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us both. <coughs> gives us that strong love for him. And at the same time, give us the ability to have proper behavior with respect to the rest of our life. وَمَا أَعْضَبَ شَرُبَ قُرْبِكْ How delightful. أَعْضَبَ comes from عَذْب. This is different from عَذَاب. عَذَاب means punishment. But عَذَب means something which is sweet. We had this before about water, for example. Here again we have it about water. عذب. عذبان means very nice, very sweet, very cool. When you have very good water for drinking, this water is عذب. وما أعظب شرب قربك. How delightful is the drink of your nearness. Imagine 
river, uh, a river which has very nice water and that river is the river of nearness to Allah if you drink water of river which is nearness to Allah you will be fully satisfied your thirst will be quenched now that loving you, remembering you, being close to you is so pleasant, so sweet, so nice, so much meeting our needs, responding to our questions so please save us from being far from you فَأَعِبْنَا means so give us refuge مِنْ طَرْدِكَ وَإِبْعَادِكَ from thy casting out طَرْد means to send back to reject and Ibad means to send far. They are similar. So please give us refuge, protection from pushing us back, casting out, or sending us far. It means that please don't let us be far from you. Please don't send us back. We want to be close to you. We don't want to be like shaitan who was given nearness but he didn't appreciate and Allah then sent him out of heaven and also made him far from himself. He was rejected, he was matrud, he was a regime. So please save us from that and we should be very concerned about this because if we are rejected then it would be very difficult to come back many people may never come back in material Achievements, worldly achievements, worldly pleasure, we should be content. We should not be greedy, we should not be too much ambitious. But when it comes to spiritual blessings and bounties, we should be ambitious. We shouldn't be content. If it is, for example, a worldly house, I should be content with something reasonable for someone like me. But if it comes to a house in heaven, I should try to make it as big as possible, as large as possible. If it comes to a worldly reach, I should try to have something reasonable, something that I can manage. There is no problem in having great amount of money but as much as you are in control of it not that you will be controlled by your money you can be a billionaire but if you can control it if you know what you are doing if you are not driven by your money no problem have it as much as you can indeed it's good if you are a servant of Allah you have lots of money and you possess your money you are not possessed by your money you are spending the proper way but many people cannot but when it comes to a spiritual reach, there's no problem. You can have it as much as possible. That would make you even more humble and would make you more uh, manage, managing and more in control of what you have. So here in this Munajatul Arifin, which is a whispered prayer for the people who are either Arif 
a true knower of Allah or they want to be Arif we say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I hope to be able to be elevated to the position of Akhas Arafik the select of your uh, knowers the elite the chosen ones means I don't want to be just a normal an average Arif I want to be among the best this is good this is to be ambitious as we say in Quran وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ imama. I don't want just to be muttaqi. I want to be a leader for muttaqi, for the pious. And I always say that if you aim at something like this, either you achieve it or you achieve something a little less. But if you achieve, uh, sorry, if you aim at just being pious, there is a chance that you may not even be pious. If someone aims at getting A in his exam, then he may get A or B or C but if someone says I just want to pass the exam so maybe he gets F so we have to be careful so we have to raise our expectations of course in a realistic way we have to be ambitious in spirituality so we say oh Allah please include me among the elect or the select of your knowers the most righteous of your servants among the most honest the most truthful of your obeyers of the people who are obedient to you this sadq is very important this sadq this honesty this truthfulness is very important because nothing works without truthfulness if it's a um, just kind of lie if it's unreal it doesn't work it, it, it's causing more problem in many lectures I have been talking about this honesty and truthfulness especially in the lectures about indicators of piety uh, we finally um, discuss this point gradually we built up and we reach this point that this commitment to the truth is one of the most important if not the most important quality of the muttaqi of the mu'min and indeed obedience to Allah is a result of commitment to the truth because Allah is al haq and you cannot be obedient to Allah when you deny the truth or you don't bother about the truth so we ask Allah to be put among the most truthful of the people who obey him the purest the most sincere of your worshippers Obad is the plural form for Abed so we want to be a worshipper of Allah but not a person who just worships without purity, without sincerity. We want to be among the most sincere of his worshippers. Ya Adimu Ya Jalil, O Great, O Almighty, O Majestic, Ya Karimu Ya Munir, O Generous, O Noble. Karim means generous, noble. Munil means the one who enables us to reach, the one who gives us, or oh, endure, or oh, endure. Berahmatika, wa mannika, ya arham al rahimin. By your mercy, by your man means your mm, favor. You can say your kindness, but man means uh, some favor which is great. Sometimes Allah obliges us by giving us too much. Rahmatika wa mannika ya arham al rahameen. O most merciful of the merciful. So this is the key, as always, for everything.
that we request at the end these are the qualities of Allah including his mercy that can help us to achieve we should have clear vision about what we want we should request Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we should work hard but we should also invest on his mercy okay alhamdulillah uh, we finished this munajatul arifin and inshallah from next week we will start with munajatul dhakirin inshallah uh, question one Assalamu uh, alaikum Shaykh alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah Would an Arif always abstain from the worldly interest and pleasure? Uh, no uh, It's not a matter of um, Abstaining from worldly interest and pleasure by for example being um, Isolated By not eating not drinking Not having um, for example any trip, any journey, any holiday, any you know visiting visitation. No, it's not a matter of that. But it's a matter of attitude. Munta, uh, we have to be careful. Sometimes we do everything and we rationalize, we justify, and we say. Uh, I have a um, great interest in having for example lots of money and this money is not causing a problem for me it's not preoccupying our mind okay in principle this is possible but are you sure that you are one of those people or for example I spend um, lots of for example time on preparing I don't know nice meal a very delicious meal and I say because mu'min also have, uh, has to enjoy his, himself or I want to for example make my family enjoy okay this is a good reason but are you really sure that this is your intention so we have to be careful but in principle the main thing is I think two things there are two main things one is to reduce our worldly engagement our worldly pleasure reduce it I'm not saying delete it but those which are not necessary it's better to keep away and have it as normal normal among the believers not normal among the old people because we are concerned with the mu'min and second thing is to correct our attitude You must have clear idea why I am doing this, why I am going after this worldly thing. If it is, inshallah, for the sake of Allah, if it is to help you to have a peaceful mind so that you can better concentrate on your piety, spirituality, on your journey, uh, that is good. So, we should stop unnecessary engagement with dunya unnecessary interaction with uh, people who work for dunya uh, and second we must be always concerned about our attitude why I am doing this otherwise there is no problem in being active in being rich in having good house good car I don't know lots of uh, maybe for example companies factories whatever in principle there is no problem but as I said we have to be careful about these points can a person be an RF and not follow the Sharia it's not possible unless a person is confused if a person is confused maybe he for example tries hard to obey Allah and he thinks that Sharia is not necessary and he has no good understanding of Sharia not good exposure to Sharia or the Sharia which he knows is not a proper Sharia so maybe there are exceptional cases that there are people who have excuse and they reach some level of closeness to Allah uh, 
either in, by following other types of religions or maybe for example being a Muslim and not following that much Sharia because they are confused maybe they achieve something but it's impossible for a person of understanding and a person of uh, intelligence to think of being an Arif and then disregard the Sharia which is legislated by Allah himself Sharia provides us with the boundaries of journey towards Allah it's not enough but it's necessary so that fixes the boundaries that you have to move within those boundaries but then you have to have more than commitment to Sharia if you just want to observe Sharia so you would do only the minimum but in addition to that you have to do lots of other things lots of moral spiritual things because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Sharia has not made everything which is useful necessary and obligatory he has made those things which are very very much needed obligatory because he doesn't want to make his Sharia difficult for people to practice we shouldn't expect from all people to be um, committed to this journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the way that mystics and true knowers of Allah want to do it. Everyone is not necessarily a way favor. So Sharia says this amount is necessary and you have to make sure that you don't uh, go beyond these boundaries. But if you want to do more, so then uh, we have more guidance for you through akhlaq, through spirituality. And therefore, the minimum, the bottom line is sharia. Okay, this is the second question. Uh, it seems that we don't have any more questions. So, I think I should stop here and I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again for this uh, opportunity that He gave us. I hope that inshallah this was useful for you. Uh, what I'm sharing with you is just my humble thoughts and my little experience. Maybe uh, you yourself you don't know many things better than me so if there is any way that you know you can share with me your thoughts please don't hesitate may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us we are traveling together we are like a mm, group of people who are pilgrims we are like you know doing Hajj together we are just trying to help each other uh, so I am also a traveler inshallah you are better traveler than me we are just helping each other and I by no means have claimed that I understand properly everything and I practice properly everything just I'm a little humble brother of you and in need of your du'as may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to uh, uh, taste this uh, beautiful experience of uh, Arifin and inshallah we also become witness of the beauty of this for other people.